the best things or the things that I've done that I've enjoyed the most, I never would have seen coming because mm. they're on the basis of just, you know, working away, doing your thing. And then these opportunities come up, you take them. Mm. I didn't know that, you know, that that gig that we did after a thunderstorm in Slovakia with the London Electricity Big Band was going to be one of the most profound live music experiences I'd ever had because yeah. I, I didn't know that I'd never really thought about electronic music festivals in Slovakia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or that you'd be playing baritone sax at a festival like that. Yeah, I, of, yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was when I was at music college studying jazz and playing in the big band on a Monday morning, I didn't think that. And and probably got the baritone gig on the basis that I was the person that could be relied on to turn up at nine o'clock with a baritone, rather than being the best player. Yeah. Um, I, but then I fell in love with that instrument. I never thought that that was going to lead to that, you know. Yeah. And magically, I, with some of the same people actually that were in that big band as well. Yeah. So it, it is pretty awesome. But you you get the benefit of being you know ten fifteen years into your career, you can start to see that. And then be yeah. super excited about the next 10 to 15 years. It's hard to see that at the start of your career. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's important. Like it's it's quite nice. That's what I've enjoyed about doing these podcasts is is kind of almost looking back on on my life and also hearing people talk about their life. It's like, like you say, you can never predict what will be a huge opportunity or whatever. I mean, again, I contacted Tony as a fanboy and we did a Riot Jazz version of Just One Second. And again, it started a relationship and, you know, we were in touch on and off for a couple of years, a few years. But then in 2016 or 20, yeah, I think it must have been 2016, he rings me and he goes, I want to do this big band. And it's like, I never imagined that that's what that relationship would create is is the opportunity to do something like that. I thought I was just, well, I don't know, what what why do you do a cover of someone's tune and give it to them? Like, what? Having had some people do that with Riot Jazz, it's almost like, oh, thanks so much. Okay, see ya. And it's like, it, it, in a weird way, like it's like what you're trying to achieve. But I, th- I think it's been open to anything because you can achieve, who who knows what will come of, of an encounter with someone or a relationship with someone. And I think that's, that's again, the wonderful thing of, of music is like you might be just a name but if someone goes oh yeah there's that guy who can do that orchestration or there's that guy who plays barry sax or i mean for you i I wanted to bring this up earlier with um the instruments that you play because when i met you it was on a i was thinking about this the other when when was it what was (laughs) i I doing i think it was a funky doctor's gig and you were either singing but i think no i think you're playing sax Right, okay. And, and Herbie was singing. Yeah. But maybe you sang, you did backing vocals or something, and we just got chatting. But then not long after that, I asked you if you played bass because we needed a bass player for a gig with Tom and Lauren. And you played bass on yeah. that weird gig where they they wanted an Irish band or they wanted loads of Irish music, and we were like, hey, you've got the wrong band here. Or we've, we've said yes to the wrong gig. <laughs> but, um, but it was through so that. I don't even really play bass. <laughs> Exactly. But I wanted to ask you about keys because I I never knew you played keyboards, I don't think, till probably when I saw you you do the classic rock show and I filmed it and I was like I remember you, obviously you were telling me that you'd been learning, you know, the keys parts for it. I knew that you were doing it, but until I saw you do it, I, I so I guess my question is, did did you ever consider yourself a keyboard player or was that one of those things that came in and you had to rise to the challenge and go, you know what, I can be the keyboard player? Definitely, definitely, definitely the latter. I got the I got wind that there were these local gigs going in a mm. chain of restaurants, but they had pianos installed, so it was for people that could sing and play piano. Right. And kind of on a whim, I I went. Oh, I could. I'd really like to do a bit more work. Um, generally, so I got an audition to go and sing and play piano, and I learned enough songs on the piano, kind of to roughly play. And then yeah. I got the gig, and then I had to work out how to do a two-hour set. Right. So through doing that, I just I just practiced really hard one January when I wasn't really that busy. Yeah. And it's like, you know, obviously I'm applying what I know about music and Yeah. You know, the pianos in terms of where the notes are is fairly self explanatory, but the the actual technique isn't. And mm. then that led to another thing that I said yes to, which led to another thing. So I guess I am a keyboard player. Now the classic rock show was, was part of that as well. Yeah, yeah. Um 
It's still the instrument, though, that sometimes when I'm, I I find myself on bigger gigs than I feel like my facility on the instrument. But that's where you've got to get over that and become. Yeah. It, it becomes then about delivering what needs to be delivered. So it's a different sort of skill set to being fluent on an instrument. Yeah. But it's it's being able to deliver what the gig needs. It's quite work, quite yeah. workmanlike, really, you know. 